Welcome to this next uh, part of the uh, 39 grip and now I want to finish this off by adding one or two more details, fillets and colors. So this will be kind of a wide variety but pretty easy video. Let's go to the YZ plane, create a sketch, and I'll simply trace out that little thin thing in the back, right? That's probably a nice way to start. Again, just like most other things that, that I've made here, I'm not going to worry about fully constraining it. I'm using my image instead. Let's go with a dual depth and say, how about 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. And that's still a bit thick. Maybe I'll just readjust that. Five thou on either side ought to be fine. That's a bit better. So we can smooth that out with some fillets in a second. Now there's a few things that I would like to add on top of this uh, that aren't in my original images, but I think are kind of fun and cool little details to add. Uh, one of which is this fin right here. Now you, it's pretty insignificant looking. I think you can see it better over here as well. But this was added, uh, I, th I believe, I'm like 90% sure that little detail was added because there was a Gripen that crashed during an air show and it was found to be a root cause of uh, instability and a in high angle of attack. And so they added that fin to fix that problem. And that'd be kind of fun to add in here, I think. So, there's my uh, axis there. Let's define a plane on that. And I think I have to reference my center plane, and it does give me an angle to define. I'm not exactly sure what that angle is because I don't have a view with this being on the very front. So. Let's just take a look. That actually seems to fit pretty well. If we want to go something like I think it's going to be about 60 degrees, but I think 60 degrees puts us a little bit low, so I'm going to use this plane as a reference plane and offset it until I can see something that looks about right. Maybe 0.15 And that seems, I'm, I'm going to say that that's pretty good. So we'll close that. We'll come down to the last plane in the tree and activate a 2D sketch on it. So I'm going to take a guess. Uh, this is looking about like that. As you can see, I could probably stand to lighten that up a little bit. We'll deactivate, create an extrude. Ah, that depth should be fine. Right, so we got a little fin in there. Nice and easy and add some cool little detail I think. We'll go to a mirror and mirror from here to here. Excellent. That looks pretty good from the front too. Okay. Now there's some interesting uh, versions, right? We have a grip in here that has a pretty straightforward tail section. And then in another photo, notice now we have this sort of a horizontal wing here. So um, that can be added depending on what version of the grip in that, that you want to add, right? Uh, I think I've added all the little details that I th that would be pertinent here. So let's add some fillets and this should be pretty interesting. First, we'll come back here. 
And we're going to see if that can fill it smoothly or not. Let's give that a try. I'll start a fillet and of course half an inch is quite big. How about 0.01? That's about right. And maybe it could come all the way around here. And we have it. Now this is going to be tricky for fillets. Uh, I've made some pretty interesting geometry right there, so that might not work out. But, oh well, I've highlighted this edge. I might as well highlight uh, this edge as well. Then we'll go here. And that's worked out very nicely. Now I can try this. Yep, I don't think that that's going to fill it. It might if you really play with it though, but I'll leave you at home to do that part if you would like. We'll fill it, say up here, and this we'll select there, maybe around here. We're doing a five thou fillet, so hopefully this will be pretty easy. Got those edges done. That's not bad. We'll do the same here. And let's highlight both edges. Beautiful. Looks like we've already got our fillets over there. You can fill it the uh, weaponry on there if you'd like. Let's just see how that works. And that does work. That works well. Let me edit that same fillet. Maybe I can fill it those internal edges as well. That worked out nice. Next, edit the same thing. Now, I should add the thickness of the material on this outer fillet if I want to have a constant thickness. It's uh, probably not quite as good to do what I'm doing and have both the inner and the outer fillets at the same thickness. Man, it is so nice to work with a, uh, with a software like this that can just fill it almost everything that you try to fill it. We're going to apply that. Nope, looks like that won't work. Of course, right as I comment as to how easy it is to get things to work, of course, but I'm still impressed that we can get all that stuff to fill it really well. You know, I should probably get the other side now with the same with the same size of fillet. There we have it. Okay, maybe these features that we've just added here, since uh, that's five thou in each direction, and I'm filleting each edge at five thou, we should have a completely smoothed uh, face on those leading and trailing edges. I think I can also get away with adding some fillets down here. Let's see. Yes, we can. Man, that fillets well. 
Let's do the same thing. And these are going to be a bit thinner, right? So I'm going very, very small, but 0 0.0025 now. And of course, it's kind of a shortcut that I should be utilizing to just highlight the whole face. But uh, when I do a lot of fillets all the time on a bunch of edges, it can be advantageous to do one at a time for the greater amount of control. But look how much easier that was, right? So we've done those fillets and we've done the back. I think I'm rather satisfied Yep, small fillets down there, that'll be just fine. All right, I think we're good. So let's say that I've added my fillets. Now, how do I color my plane? And what colors do I want to make my plane, right? The first one was black and green. I think that is a killer combination. But maybe I can do, you know, a, a new color, dark gray and blue, perhaps. Either way, uh, let's go to part color. And this will color every face of the part, whatever color we'd like. Ooh, why not have a pretty, you know, highly reflective model? <laughs> um, right, so color. And I can choose on this scale here what kind of color I'd like, maybe right there. That looks nice. That looks really nice. Maybe I'll go a bit darker though. Darker. Because I set the reflectivity to be really high, I think uh, we don't have quite as dark of colors because they'll be reflecting a little bit more of the background, but that looks cool with the ambient occlusion and the shadows in there, all those little details. Makes for a nice looking plane. So if I wish for this to be any darker, it would probably be smart to change the reflectivity to maybe 60%. And you can see even in the preview, it gets probably too dark now. Let's move that up. That's pretty sharp. I think that's a good balance of being reflective and having the right color. Uh, since we're going to be adding colors now, I can probably um, toggle my sketches and references. And I can make my sketch views off now, presuming that I'm done using them. Hide, hide. So my tracing images are gone. Now there are certain individual faces that I might wish to add color to. Maybe I can start off, I'm going to hold the uh, control key down to select multiple things, of course. Or hold the shift, rather, that's how you do it in a Libre. Uh, maybe I'll do these leading and trailing parts of the wing. That looks pretty good. And I'll go to model. And this time face color, I think this was introduced in version 20. And I can select a color or choose a custom color. I can go to define custom colors. You know, maybe kind of that mixture of blue and purple would look kind of cool. I don't know if you've seen the 97 Supra edition, where this is like, is it blue? Is it purple? Can't quite tell. It's kind of a cool uh, color to apply to things. So, oh, and I better apply this face color too. Or... Because in the tree, colors are added in the tree, I can always edit and then select a face to add. So you can have a very concise way of adding colors. I can also add the faces of my fins, right? And if I add that, you can kind of see, make, it kind of brings the weapons to, uh, to more life <laughs> to add that. So um, I'll fast forward adding the fins because it is just kind of long and laborious and it's boring to watch. So if you have seizures, look away. I'm going to fast forward this.
So now I'll choose a different color, right? I'll select my canopy faces, holding shift, of course, and not control. We'll go to not part color rather, but face color. Maybe a dark blue for the canopy. Um, I'll probably go custom on that. Yeah, so 134, 240, 51. Let's try that. And then applied to one face. Let's try the other. Okay. We want these insides to be as black and non-reflective as possible, though I don't think you can adjust the reflectivity on individual faces. And I don't want to miss my fillet here. So we go to face color and make sure that we are all the way black, zero, zero, zero. Now I'm getting multiple tree items for the same color, so if you want a short tree, just make sure you add everything to that same color. Apply. I probably want to do the same thing back here, right? We have a whole engine to worry about here. Maybe we'll leave our well, no, these things would look pretty cool. So I'll fast forward this too, but we'll add some black face colors on these. I'll add some black highlights onto these faces as well. Can I get those to stand out? That looks pretty good. All right. Well, I think that is all the color that I would want to add. I'll stick this on GrabCAD. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.